interesting. You call your childhood a weird childhood. (laughs) (laughs) What does that mean, a weird childhood? So the way I describe my childhood is the best seats I ever had at Madison Square Garden were at my mother's wedding because my mom got married on July 1st, 1982 with 2,075 other couples. For those of you who don't know what that means, I was a member of the Unification Church. I was a Mooney. I grew up in a religious cult. And on the other hand, the best cocaine I ever had was from my father's friend, the judge. Yes, actually a judge in a small town in New Jersey. And once I did a book reading and my high school boyfriend went in the back and all you could hear him say was, it was really good at cocaine. <laughs> so these are the two parts of my childhood. And what I always say that the quote I've used before is like, you know, it's weird, but you don't know it's bad, right? I knew that my childhood mm. was absolutely different and I can make people laugh with the stories about my mom and my dad and the craziness of what they both did. But so yeah, it was, um, it was, it was different. It was, it was a bit unusual, both, both. And then the two together are just kind of mind blowing. That's so interesting. So you knew it was weird, but you didn't (laughs) know it was bad because it was normalized for you. It's all you knew, right? When it's all you know, it's all you know, right? Right. And so I knew that it was weird. Like when, when you're in a cult, you're not in a cult, right? That's the first thing. No one joins a cult. No one's in a cult. Those are cults. The Hare Krishnas were cults. The Mormons were cult. We were not a cult. So, right. And that's all, you know, so you just don't, it really was when, you know, in my twenties, when I, a lot of things had happened and I crawled into a 12 step program, you know, tell me he's an alcoholic. There's no way I would ever be with an alcoholic. Cause I was always so functional on the outside mm. and it was totally unaware of how broken I was on the inside. Um, and then I realized there's a lot of reasons why I would be with an alcoholic. There's a lot of things that were not so great. And as my brother says, when you sit in a room with like a hundred people and they all have these unbelievable harsh stories and you tell your story and their jaws all drop, you go, Oh, Oh, I guess it was a little bit more <laughs> than just weird. Huh? Like, that's, and that was like, it hits you like it's on a bricks. Like, wow. Oh yeah. I grew up in a cult and a lot of other things that shouldn't have happened happened. Yeah. So, so yes. let's talk about this cult for a moment. So yeah. you grew up in a cult and, um, but you, your mom kind of disowned you, right? Yeah. Like, is that how you would say that? Yeah. And how so, old were you when she kind of kicked you out or, or sent you on with your dad? So my parents, you know, got my mom and dad, my mom got pregnant when she was 18, had my brother at 19, me at 20 split up a couple years later, hippies. It was the sixties. It was crazy. It was, you know, primal screaming and encounter groups and macrobiotic diets and a lot of drugs and a lot of abuse, a lot of stuff going on. And then when I was 10, actually when I was eight, uh, we were supposed to, my mom got a, bought a van for my father, Danny, because I never can call my father by his name because he's a person and I should call him by his name, not, not dad. She bought a van from Danny and we were going to go across country to live on a commune in California. But instead, my grandmother got diagnosed with cancer. So we went across state of New Jersey and moved in with my grandparents. And my grandmother passed and we stayed with my grandfather. And then in um, 1974, in January of 1974, my mom's friend with whom she used to hitchhike across the country every summer to go to a commune called her and said, you have to go hear Reverend Sun Myung Moon speak. And my mom went and came back a changed person. This is amazing. It's incredible. Jesus wasn't supposed to die. These people are beautiful. Nothing happened for a little while. And then in the summer of that year of 1974, the Moonies, the church members, convinced my mom to go to an indoctrination center up in upstate New York in Barrytown, New York. And she went up for a weekend and came back and went up for a week and came back and went up for another week and basically spent the summer there. And one weekend actually took us up there and we go to this huge building and we go to this big gymnasium and all the sisters, the women are sitting on the right-hand side of the floor and all the brothers and men are sitting on the left-hand side of the floor. I am answering your question. And within moments, Moon walked in and began speaking, and that was it. He was my Messiah, and we were in. And it just, you believed, and you could tell he's the Messiah, and people battle him, you believe. And we just took all the doctrination in. And as I always like to say, the church was actually a haven from the craziness before a haven for my brother and I. Mm-hmm. So this goes on for a couple months. We're living outside of New York City with my grandfather. And what actually happened is, um, my mom started spending more and more time at the church center in New York City. And then one day she sat us down in a chair and she said, I think, I think I need to be more involved. What do you two think I should do? And we said, oh, you should leave. <laughs> <laughs> and so she did. Um, and so I was 11 at the time. So she moved out. She left us with my grandfather. 
Um, and I was, you know, shopping, cooking, cleaning, running the house, getting A plus plus pluses and being the star in the school play, being an overachiever that I always am. And then a couple months later, uh, my, my grandfather, my grandfather was a judge and when my grandmother got sick. He got depressed and stopped practicing his cases. And then when my mom left, he got more depressed and then he got disbarred for not practicing his cases. And then he was going to go to court and maybe to jail. And so the doctor put him in the psychiatric ward of the local hospital instead. And someone went to go get my mom, who was in Queens at that point, And she said, it's not my problem and didn't come back. And um, then, uh, then someone finally told Danny, my dad, what was going on. And he came to get us. And that's when we moved into New York City to live with him. And that's when like my, my belief, my heart, every, my soul, everything was about my Messiah. But we lived with Satan, right? We lived with my dad and sex, mm-hmm. drugs, and squalor in New York City's East Village is how I describe it. So that's when, that's when the two worlds really were my, my worlds were these two worlds. <laughs>